out in front of the Russian White House. Pictures by CNN cameraman Paul Beaker. President Boris Yeltsin has been saying for some two weeks now that he wanted to end this stalemate without bloodshed. A little more than an hour ago, we learned that President Yeltsin had ordered decisive measures to end it, measures that we see are involving a great deal of armed force of the Russian military and very, very serious gunfire. Steve or Eileen, from where you're standing, can you see where the fire is heading? You know, we've got a little uh, small arms fire uh, over on this side of the river. Uh, it seems like the fire is being exchanged in the back of the White House at the northwest corner around that bunker that Eileen was mentioning where uh, the majority of the weapons had been stored. Uh, this, this picture that you can see from the skyscraper about a half a kilometer to the back of the White House, we see the APCs that have moved forward slightly. Uh, I have not noticed any fire from them. Uh, they do not have a clear line into that bunker area. There's another bit of small arms fire around the Ukraine Hotel uh, across the river. Uh, we almost throw a rock at that hotel from where we're standing. It looks as if another injured, another injured person being carried away, perhaps. It's a dead body, we can't tell from this distance. It appears they're carrying that uh, person to the Moscow City building that had been taken over by anti-Yeltsin demonstrators, uh, people who are supporting the Congress and all of this. So it, it would appear that that victim was from the rebel side. Reports overnight uh, that the defenders of the White House had taken two or three doctors hostage inside the White House. Uh, obviously, knowing that they were going to need medical attention inside that building. Since this demonstration broke out, first at noon yesterday, Moscow time, or gunfire, and then seriously at uh, about 2 o'clock, uh, and then about an hour later when the demonstrators stormed over the barricades around the White House, retaking their ground. He almost could have written a script for what was going to happen here. Boris Yeltsin not reacting immediately, defending the television tower on the north side of town, and vowing not to attack first, but ordering his troops to shoot back if fired upon. Now, after dawn, around the Russian White House, uh, armored personnel carriers moving around the Russian White House, drawing fire, and uh, we think fairly obviously now firing back. This is behind the Russian White House. That is an armored personnel carrier moving forward up to a path that would take him into Freedom Square. Gunfire greets the Moscow morning. Our extensive coverage of the crisis in Russia and the battle for the Russian White House will continue in 90 seconds. Please stay with us. State finals coming up. A lot of pressure to win. I don't eat right, I get irregular, so I don't project a winning attitude, and I always see that. I tried some natural bulk fiber, but I couldn't take all that grit. Then I discovered smooth textured metamucil. No grit in the mix, or the taste. Easy to get the extra fiber I need every day to stay regular. You got a winning attitude, you win. <laughs> if you're lucky. Smooth textured metamucil, the natural choice for regularity. Saw the assignment. The office? Yep. Marketing forgot the instruction sheets for the Mr. Squiggly robot. No. All 50,000? Mm-hmm. So I'm taking care of it. That's 50,000 copies by morning. No problem. You're gonna be working all night. Well, actually, my staff is working on it. Saving us a fortune in overtime. When, what staff? When did you give me, when did you get a staff? Kinko's. Your branch office, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I don't have a staff. Air that is free-flowing, like the sea, living in harmony with light, dancing in its shadows. Fit, vibrant hair.
nourished and cared for by the elements of our earth. This is Paul Mitchell here. Remember, buy the real Paul Mitchell products in salons only. Russian President Boris Yeltsin has ordered decisive measures to retake the renegade White House. We are watching them unfold in Moscow. Our continuing coverage of the crisis in Russia is back with Daniel Papp, analyst here in Atlanta, CNN's Eileen O'Connor, and Moscow Bureau Chief Steve Hurst in the Russian capital. The picture now, uh, you're now seeing a couple of APCs at the back of the Russian White House that is brought to you courtesy of CNN's Bruce Conover, who has been up in a building about a half a kilometer away all night long first with a night vision scope on his camera, and now at daylight has come showing you these live pictures. Off to the right is the region where we think most of this fighting is now going on. It's, the view of that is blocked by those trees, but there's a bunker there where the defenders of the White House have stored their arms. Now, I think, what about the roof of this building? On the roof of this building, there are snipers of the very heavy artillery that would apparently be tank fire or APC fire. On the roof of the building, the Russian White House, there are snipers, and at night uh, that roof is the access to it is closed. We had a migrate unit inside on that roof. We frequently had to go up and change batteries. As you can see, there's a the roof. And that's, that's, that's clearly uh, fire. brief break in the fighting, uh, Alec Moran has been directing our coverage in the control room here in Moscow. Alec, I wonder if you could talk to Bruce and ask him to look at the back of the White House. We might see some damage in the last two of the fighting. Okay, we're As you can see, the armored personnel carriers are moving in that field. That's uh, where they're moving up. Eileen, we're losing your voice to the sound of the very, very heavy fire down in the streets of Moscow. While we're listening to that, there's also something I'd like you to listen to. I'm, I'm monitoring the, the dispatches from the various news agencies. The French news agency, AFP, is reporting and quoting the Interfax news agency, Russia's own news agency. Russian Prime Minister Viktor Chernomyrdin, it says, issued a final warning Monday to the defenders of the parliament calling on them to surrender their weapons immediately. This, once again, according to the Interfax News Agency. Chairman Weirden is quoted as saying that the government decided to give a final chance to those inside the White House. They must surrender their weapons immediately. The words of the Russian Prime Minister, Viktor Chairman Weirden, to the last holdouts still inside the Russian Parliament building as it comes under the assault by troops loyal to President Boris Yeltsin. Well, in his statements uh, asking to negotiate, Mr. Yeltsin had, in fact, again asked that they lay down their arms. And this camera, this is Paul Dietrich's camera, uh, we did see an explosion. Cameras on such long lenses being rocked by some of those explosions. The thuds, very heavy artillery. 
I'd like to bring in Professor Papp now. He has a thought he'd like to show us about what we're watching. Some of that extended bursts of fire that we heard may have been, may have been suppression fire from government forces uh, trying to keep the snipers down on the roof, if in fact that was fire coming from the government forces. I would say that that was when some of the heavy artillery that we heard, there was some uh, fire coming from the White House. That's a shot of the windows of the White House. As you can see, they had put blinds and newspapers on some of the windows to hide their vantage points, um, particularly in Mr. Hasbladas and Mr. Buscori's offices. There were, in fact, uh, some coverings on the windows to try to hide those places. Mr. Muskoi last night put a curfew on the White House, as we reported earlier, so that there would be no movement inside the White House. That was because I'm sure that they felt that uh, any movement it would make them even more um, antsy. And as we went through those darkened hallways, it's very, very difficult. We often, as we were staying overnight, we often would um, come upon uh, soldiers, defenders of the White House. And they would say, stop, halt. And then we would show our identification, and then they would say, proceed. And it would just be a voice from a darkened hall and a light on our identification. It's very eerie indeed inside those halls at night, especially when these men thought they would be under attack. Eileen, I don't know if you're seeing the pictures we're seeing, but there's a group of men there remarkably close to the action. I don't know if they're curious or if they are participants, but they seem to be uh, getting closer all the time. It looks to me, Jonathan, as if those are maybe journalists. There are a couple of camera bags visible there. Look like some journalists were here. We saw a flash. Some of them have Incredible sounds in the center of Moscow. Listen. 